I'm going to review the installation of a charger system for my house battery, a second battery in a 2020 Transit. Show how I accomplished this. What we're looking at is the passenger side seat pedestal area. I chose to mount the Battleborne 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in this location because it's too large to fit under the driver's seat where the engine battery is located. That's a group 48 battery which is lead acid. The vehicle has the option of coming with two batteries under the driver's seat but this vehicle only came with one. So I wanted to have an independent battery system just for camping and running accessories independent of the engine system. So that's why we did this. Um, what we have is the Battleborne battery mounted here and I've got another video describing all that portion of how it's held down. But I'm going to review the charging system. So I chose to get a DC to DC charger from Victron it's a smart charger, which just means you can use the Bluetooth app on your phone from Victron and see what your voltages are on your engine battery and your house battery over here is what I'm calling this one. It's isolated and that just means that this power system is not using the common ground of the vehicle. You can buy one of these units that's non-isolated and it only has three leads. It'll have two positive and one negative. And the negative is a shared ground throughout the system, but I did want to go that route initially, but had some troubles trying to get the unit in time and perhaps this is a better system is what it's been recommended to. Um, it'll be isolating the whole engine battery system from this because it's not sharing a common ground. I'll have to run power for all my items that I load this battery using two leads, one for hot and one for ground that are not going to the vehicle ground. So what did I do here? Uh, I, I located installation wise I put it under the pedestal so that it's right on the back here there's very good ventilation holes and ports through the sheet metal uh, if you read the manual from Victron they recommend to mount this vertically with the wires down I guess that'll prevent any kind of crap from going in there but the, the real key is you want to get the heat out. This thing's got a, a heat sink on the back of it that is pretty pretty large but given the fact that it's all open to the air in the back I think I should be pretty good and you want to keep those fins oriented vertically so the convection can do its job and get the heat out of there. So these two leads on the input side are coming from the engine battery over there. There's just two leads running on the floor. I'll get over there later. Underneath, it's really handy the way that the mats work in this thing. Uh, so the wires are totally hidden. And then these two wires just go to your house battery. So I've got the, the hot side here, and here's the negative. It's just running along and coming back around over here. But you want to have an inline fuse close to the battery. I chose to use this Busman inline fuse because it was very convenient. It came with a 6 gauge wire. I put a 40 amp fuse in here. I don't intend to be uh, doing lots of load uh, elsewhere. Well, I guess this one's really to you know for this circuit but any other items I'll be putting fuses on and, and not drawing a ton but the vehicle actually has a 60 inline 
over here on the in the input side under the driver's seat there's a fuse box but I, I'll, I'll share what those fuses look like here in a second let me just continue on the installation here's a view from the back and the exterior I just bolted here and here with uh, stainless fasteners zip tied all my extra wire I didn't want to cut these because inevitably I'll probably be rerouting stuff later and I didn't want to waste it but essentially this glob of wire is just the hot and the neg hot and ground coming from the, the engine battery so the wires as I said we're running over here along the floor and here's the, the hot wire which goes to what Ford calls a customer connection point there's a little terminal junction point here with a cover that comes off which I'll take off I can get it off there we go so it's kind of hard to see from right here but the vehicle also has provision for a, another customer connection point right here which I'm sticking my finger in that one I think is a 175 amp fuse it comes with a mega fuse but this vehicle wasn't wired for it I don't need it but here's a, a hot terminal right there that goes in to the fuse box and the fuse box is they call it the pre I guess the pre fuse block it's all in here but inside of that fuse box there's a fuse for the customer connection point it's kind of hard to get to uh, normally you would take the whole seat off the pedestal take the the battery box cover off take a, a bracket there's a whole bunch of parts you got to take off and then take the the battery tray out and the battery just to get into this fuse box which I have documented lots of pictures maybe I could add some uh, anyway here's the type of fuse this is a it's in a 40 amp package but this is actually a 60 amp fuse this yellow guy is the color code that they use for 60 that came with the vehicle from the factory in that customer connection point I took it out and I put one of these guys in it's a 40 amp the green color so I just I was actually able to do that without taking everything off um, I was able to finagle through the fuse box pry it open and then use some long hemostats like six inches to get in there and pull the fuse so I know at least in the future if I have a problem I don't have to take everything apart as much but um, here's the this is the fuse holder from Busman and what do we got I don't know if I have to read all that off but I got it off of Amazon it's something like 10 bucks and here's the fuse that I put in it's a 40 amp it's a max blade fuse so that's what we saw over here earlier it's 40 amps right here it's got a cover I'll put the cover on just to show but I I strain relieved it all right here it, it's suspended 